Russian, Russian media uh, that will start in, in Russian. And we start with the first uh, question. President will be on call, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Minister, on behalf of uh, the UN Correspondent Association. Uh, welcome and thank you for this uh, meeting. Um, my name is Nabil Abisab. I'm Al Farra TV station correspondent. You spent uh, four or five days of intensive discussions with Mr. Kerry at the ISSG. Can you tell us about any progress you have achieved? Is this the end of diplomacy regarding the agreement on the cessation of hostilities? What do you have to say to the Syrian people today? Well, everything which we said already in the resolutions of the Security Council, in the decisions of the International Syria Support Group, and in the Russian-American documents which have been made eventually, have been made public, because our American friends were shying away from doing so for the reasons I don't understand. Basically, this approach, as consolidated in the resolutions of the Security Council, provides for movement on several threats fighting terrorism, making sure that there is ceasefire between the government and the moderate opposition, except Nusra and ISIL, ensuring humanitarian access and launching immediately political process, which must be inclusive, uh, involving all Syrian parties without any preconditions. The Security Council and the Russian-American agreement also provided for uh, separation of those opposition groups who would like to be part of the cessation of hostilities from Nusra. And uh, this was demanded, I think, in January for the first, or in December. And this uh, goal has been reiterated repeatedly. Unfortunately, uh, the coalition led by the United States, uh, which committed itself to make sure that this separation happens, uh, has not been able to do this. Uh, though my good friend and colleague John Kerry, every time we meet, reaffirms that this is the commitment of the United States. We understand that this is a difficult task, but everything is difficult in Syria. And to say that you close your eyes on the fact that uh, Nusra is covering its positions with some moderate groups and therefore don't touch Nusra, is not what we agreed. Uh, the, second, the second topic, which is uh, very important, which is crucial, uh, is uh, the political process. We cannot just uh, close our eyes when one group of the Syrian representatives uh, sabotages the decision of the Security Council, which clearly stated launching the process without any preconditions. I don't envy Stefan de Mistura and his team. We sympathize with them. Uh, but I believe they should be more guided by the Security Council resolutions rather than by caprices uh, of some of the uh, participants of negotiations, especially since this, this very group says that they uh, would not participate in the negotiations if there is no uh, pre-decision pre of the fate of President Assad. This is, again, flagrant violation of the Security Council resolutions. So we're all in favor of the ceasefire, but without separation Nusra, uh, or rather the opposition from Nusra, the ceasefire is meaningless. Uh, during the period from 12th uh, of September, when the Russian-American document was formally uh, in force, uh, after this date, almost 350 attacks of the opposition in Aleppo alone against the government and some residential quarters. Many people were killed, including Syrian military and civilians. And this is not the way, uh, you know, the cessation of hostilities should be, should be uh, maintained. Uh, but when the Syrian government responded to these attacks, uh, we were told that this is undermining credibility of the entire exercise. Therefore, they must must not respond, uh, sit idle for seven days, and then maybe the opposition would be kind enough to agree that the cessation of hostilities should be, should be uh, maintained by the opposition as well. 
Uh, and the second, the second issue is humanitarian uh, deliveries. Uh, I alluded to already uh, in my speech uh, to the problems uh, for the for the entire process uh, created by the uh, incidents in Deir Azor and Aleppo. And uh, I can only say that the Russian-American deal provided for Castello Road to be made safe for humanitarian deliveries. And there was a mechanism, the procedures agreed in very great detail. In particular, uh, it was provided for the government and the opposition to move by equal distances from the Castello Road. The government started doing this several days ago. The opposition uh, did not reciprocate. More than that, the opposition started firing at the government forces as they were withdrawing in accordance with the Russian-American agreement. So uh, this, and then again, the agreement provided for the government to create one checkpoint uh, and for the opposition to create another one. The government did what it was to do. Uh, the opposition did not lift the finger. So we have to understand one very simple thing. All components of the package endorsed by the Security Council must be addressed with the same vigor. And we cannot tolerate situation when uh, humanitarian aspects are being abused, you know, and speculated upon. Uh, for, the, for the purposes, I, I want to be mistaken, but it seems that some people want to spare Lustra and to keep it for maybe a later stage when uh, uh, the notorious Plan B might be announced. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mr. Foreign Minister, um, uh, in ISSG meeting yesterday, there was a demand for seven days truce. Um, we understand you offer three days, and today you had a meeting with John Kerry, the Foreign Minister, uh, Secretary of State. Were there compromise find out be between the two of you? And what good is seven days or three days if you, uh, you stated that the conditions humanitarian cannot be improved without rooting out the terrorist group first? Uh, well, if you want to go into these details, uh, I, I have to uh, say a couple of words which I normally would prefer not to pronounce. Uh, originally, our American colleagues, I, th I think on Wednesday, said, why cannot we consider a three-day period, at least three-day period? We checked with the military who know the situation on the ground, and we accepted it next morning. They said, thank you very much, but we now need seven. I, I don't think this is the uh, appropriate way to conduct negotiations. In principle, I, I, I am convinced that these kind of things, for how long you can announce uh, pilot uh, truce period, uh, what would be the guarantee that it would not be violated, all these things must be discussed by professional military people. And we did create a Geneva cell, cell with the United States. And the people there, at least the Russian military representatives, they are ready to sit down and to develop a common map of dislocation of, of Nusra, so that there is no ambiguity, so that, it, that, uh, so that there is no outcry uh, every time Nusra is hit and uh, people start complaining that you hit you know, somebody else. This is the key of the problem. Otherwise, otherwise as I said, uh, as soon as we separate, we can have truce forever. For, the, for, for those who are not losing. что тогда э, для этого придется США ввязаться в войну в Сирии и э, с Россией. Как он? Somebody is sending messages, right? Somebody is talking over the phone. Ma'am, can you stop doing this, please? Oh, translation. I apologize. I apologize. И перед вами тоже извините. Да. Значит, обсуждалась возможность американского контроля над воздушным.
Что касается, что касается заявлений, вернее, инициатив, которые рассматриваются на Капитолии, в Вашингтоне, честно говоря, я к ним отношусь под сдержанно, не очень за ними слежу, потому что там, особенно в условиях внутриполитической конъюнктуры, предпринимается немало шагов, которые призваны немедленно получить какой-то пропагандистский эффект, а на деле не имеют перспективы, перспективы реализации. В любом случае, я доволен, что, как вы сказали, обязательно обмену ведет начальника, начальника штабов, не хочет воевать с Россией и Сирией. И я думаю, это ответственная позиция военного человека. Что касается отмежевания, то... Вы знаете, я сегодня только что выступал на Генеральной Ассамблее ООН, я сказал, что все больше и больше у нас создается впечатление, что кто-то либо не может, либо не хочет. Если говорить о неспособности, то э, решающую роль, конечно, во влиянии на э, группы, которые в Сирии воюют, имеют члены коалиции, возглавляемые Соединенными Штатами Америки. Все примерно представляют, у кого из членов этой коалиции есть влияние на, на те или иные отряды. Поэтому здесь, собственно говоря, картина ясна. И речь идет только о том, чтобы отдать им команду и перестать их поддерживать, пока они не отползут от позиций, которые занимают, которые занимают террористы. Значит, это не делается. Если это не делается... По той причине, которую нам выдвигают, а именно, вот надо, чтобы правительство перестало летать, и тогда эти отряды убедятся, что можно отойти от нусра, что их никто не будет бомбить, то это, честно говоря, мало убедить, потому что это какая-то искусственная увязка. Поэтому не можем отделаться от мысли все-таки, что это не неспособность, а нежелание. Но уж как минимум нежелание... всей коалиции в целом, она же работает на основе консенсуса, как я понимаю, в таких вещах, там нельзя просто приказать. Вот такие сейчас реалии современного мира, мир уже перестал быть однополярным, когда из одной столицы дают всем приказы и все их выполняют. Значит, уже не получается. Но э, мы работаем, повторю, со всеми оппозиционерами, я имею в виду политический группы, и со всеми членами э, американской коалиции, как, особенно с региональными странами, мы ведем речь о необходимости все-таки от, от, отделить патриотическую, там, здоровую оппозицию от террористов, потому что в конечном итоге история уже не раз показывала, что заигрывание с террористами, попытки их использовать ситуативно в какой-то обстановке для достижения сиюминутных геополитических целей, оборачиваете тем, что потом эти же террористы, которых вы использовали, потом будут использовать вас и обратят свои грязные помыслы в вашу сторону. Так было и с маджахедами в Афганистане, которые потом переросли в Аль-Каиду. Так было и с, тем, с историей создания исламского государства, так называемого, после событий в Ираке. Так что грабли они одни и те же. Повторяю, мы ощущаем двусторонних контактов со странами региона, понимаем этой задачи, но, видимо, нужно все-таки еще больше укреплять доверие между всеми внешними игроками. И тогда постараемся достичь результата. Но если, если это и неспособность, и отсутствие желания, я надеюсь, что это не так, не хочу в это верить, то тогда вывод только один, что все отрицания наличия плана «Б» они не вполне искренне. Джеймс Бейс, из Аль-Джазира. Вы рассказали нам, как вы приехали сюда, ищите мир и пытаетесь восстановить Сейсфар. Но с тех пор, как вы были в Нью-Йорке, в последние 48 часов, была большая эскалация бомбардировки Алеппо. Как вы объясняете это? Есть ли русские аэрокрафты involved? И если это просто сирийский аэрофорс, вы его кондемите? Знаете, я, I, I condemn, I condemn uh, anyone who violates uh, the international humanitarian law. I explained already to you, I hope you, was, uh, I hope you were listening to my uh, answer to the first question, what this entire situation is about. 
you cannot speculate on the humanitarian aspects of the, of the crisis, on the humanitarian sufferings of the civilians. And by this, by insisting on humanitarian uh, deliveries first, uh, you know, have a pretext not to move uh, on political process, not to move on separation, the opposition from the terrorists. It's a very dirty game if this is uh, done uh, intentionally. Uh, as far as the attacks are concerned, we, if you, if you listen to the Security Council debate, what I said was we insist on the investigation of what happened to the humanitarian convoy in the Eastern Aleppo. John Kerry said, unfortunately, uh, that we know who did it. Fine, uh, you know, we have been through this uh, uh, two years ago when the uh, Malaysian airline uh, plane was shot down over Ukraine. We insisted that the Security Council launched an investigation. The Americans said, yeah, okay, investigation may go, but we know who did it. That's the difference. You know, either you have the uh, right uh, for the, for the uh, final wisdom and, uh, and use this uh, as you please, or you are a member of international community and you want uh, some collective action and some uh, uh, truth to be established. Uh, by the way, I, I spoke of Deir uh, Zor, uh, and the people, uh, the Americans told us, yeah, that, that was a mistake, but we apologize, so forget about it. Uh, I brought a quote uh, from Voice of America, September 20. Uh, Central Command spokesman Colonel John Thomas. Direct quote, for roughly two full days, that's about the we were fully we were observing this target and believed that we had pretty good intelligence on what we were looking at. Uh, it was a dynamic target, so it was not a planned deliberate strike, he explained. But we did take a couple of days to develop the target, and the decision was made by the decision authority that it was a good target after looking at all the intelligence and considering it. So the decision was not made on the spur of the moment. How about that? In their reserve, the situation has been static for more than two years. The government troops surrounded by ISIL, and that's it. And, uh, you know, if, if uh, this is a mistake after two full days of intelligence and of targeting, uh, then we also want investigation, frankly speaking. And by the way, by the way, on, on uh, regarding the humanitarian convoy, it's not very difficult to find what was used to hit it. Artillery shell, a rocket, uh, aerial bomb. There must be uh, leftovers of this uh, debris of the, of the ordinance. So I, I, we asked the Americans who might have access there. To, to, to start uh, the honest investigation. I hope they would do this. It's, John Kerry said that they also want to know the truth. Thank you. Uh, Minister, Minister Lavrov. Uh, Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Uh, your colleague, John Kerry, has spoken today about uh, a little progress today on possibly saving the deal. Can you tell us what that progress might be? Is Russia now considering uh, a possible seven-day truce? And if this happens to all fall apart, what is your plan B? Uh, we don't have any plan B because we are convinced that there is no military solution to this crisis. Uh, this is also conviction uh, of... Uh, John Kerry is also convinced that there could be no military solution. He said so yesterday. Unfortunately, when we created a serious support group, uh, the first declaration of that group was not able to reflect this simple phrase. There is no military solution to the Syrian conflict. Some members of the group prevented uh, all of us to say this in one voice. Uh, as regards uh, the situation uh, between us and the Americans as co-chairs of the ISSG, uh, I said already a couple of times today that any special measures which go beyond the document of 9th of September are senseless if we don't start separation. Our military sit in Geneva. The Americans also have their team there, but they're not very 
open if you uh, if, if, if you wish to, to daily serious work we are convinced that it is not going to take long if intelligence is put on the table and the map is agreed with locations of Lustra. And then there would be no misunderstanding, no nothing. I mean, not, nothing which would be uh, preventing us uh, uh, from moving on humanitarian, on ceasefire, uh, cessation of hostilities. Uh, and of course, there must be there must be immediate relaunch of political process, which the Security Council demanded to start without any preconditions. But for this, you have to deliver on what you committed yourself to uh, in December. Separate the opposition from Nostra. We were told one month, then we were told two weeks, then we were told a couple of months, then we were told very difficult, and then we were told, but we still will be trying to do this. But to separate, as I said, we need to sit down to have a map and to agree on locations where Nostra can pay intelligence. The Russian military, we have uh, intelligence, of course, and the Americans have the same and they have coalition. But uh, the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, uh, who was already quoted today, I think yesterday said that there is no, that sharing intelligence with Russia is a bad idea. And that's on the day when the Russian-American documents were made public, and they clearly, explicitly uh, require exchange of intelligence. So who takes the decisions? It's very difficult to understand. It does not help in this situation. And it, Increases suspicion that something is fishy, and we want we want uh, to. Uh, we never mentioned Plan B. Plan B was mentioned by uh, our partners, uh, mentioned and then denied. Uh, but I hope uh, I, I trust John Kerry when he says that he is convinced there is no military solution. This is absolutely our position. And is Russia now considering a seven-day truce? I, I said that any truce, seven day, three days, would be senseless. Because I gave you examples of what was going on after 12th of September when the document uh, was enforced, 350 attacks by the opposition close to Nusra against government troops and against uh, living quarters. People get killed from the Syrian army, from the civilian population, and absolute uh, inability of the American-led coalition to deliver on the pulling back from Castello, which the government started doing actually and they just uh, refused so we want to we want to see <clears throat> uh, any sign which would prove that the coalition has influence on those who are on the ground uh, facing the government i don't think it's uh, asking too much thank you thank you thank you uh minister could you on the, on the question question of chemical weapons uh, the UN's joint investigative mechanism recently confirmed that Syria and the Islamic State have used um, chemical weapons in the in the case of Syria more than once. Uh, I wanted to know if Russia favors some sort of any kind of penalties, any sort of disciplinary actions, sanctions, a resolution of the Council, any way to sort of push for accountability on this issue, and whether you've had discussions with Secretary Kerry um, or you know with the Americans in general on this issue. No, we didn't discuss it. Uh, we. I mean, our delegations discussed it in the Security Council. It's uh, a good report, good quality. Uh, unfortunately, you quoted it uh, a bit uh, differently. It, it does not say that uh, they confirm that the government and ISIL use the, use the chemical weapons. They uh, present evidence which is not conclusive, and they recognize this. They, it, it, it was very professionally formulated. And we want truth to be established. There is the mechanism which I think was extended uh, a little uh, time-wise uh, exactly for this purpose, and we will be uh, ready to cooperate with it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lavrov. Uh, the regional powers in the Bizarre uh, Abuja on night in television, the regional powers, especially Turkey and Israel, both were involved almost simultaneously against the Syrian army in some instances and against other opposition groups. Uh, how is your contact with these regional groups, especially when it comes to the area close or, or proximity to Aleppo and those which are close to the Golan? Uh, how is your contact with them and how can they play a role, a different role in this conflict? Anyone, anyone uh, 
who is present on the ground in Syria without invitation, without consent of the government, is there in violation of international law. Uh, anyone who flies uh, Syrian airspace uh, without uh, consent, without acquiescence at least of the Syrian government, is violating international law as well. Yes, we are, as I said, in touch with all regional countries. We understand their concerns, the real uh, challenges to their security, be it Turkey, be it Israel, be it other countries, and we have a dialogue with them, uh, trying to make sure that whatever they are uh, concerned of uh, being to be resolved uh, in the uh, framework of international law. It is not, it is not uh, difficult, it is not impossible. The basic problem uh, in this regard is uh, uh, unwillingness of some of regional players uh, to recognize that whatever you say, whatever you send to your, uh, to your friends uh, in the armed opposition, the single biggest, most efficient force fighting ISIL and Nusra in Syria is the Syrian army. And uh, just to, to stick to the notion that five years ago Assad became illegitimate and therefore we are not going you know, to uh, fight terror uh, collectively, until he is there, I think it's absolutely irresponsible. But uh, little by little, life, I think, will, will, will uh, make everyone understand that you, it's only together that you fight terrorism and you must have your priorities right. Uh, the Americans, the, the responsible uh, American officials, uh, recognized, at least, at least in our discussions, that ISIL is much bigger threat than us. So have your priorities right. Thank you. Good to see you again. Um, there, USGO Brian has given constant press conferences and, and speeches on Syria denying a lot of convoys to different parts of the country, which could be a war crime if you're trying to starve people, <laughs> just like throwing barrel bombs at civilians is one. Have you any influence in trying to get the humanitarian convoys moving? And I'm not speaking about the mess in Aleppo. No, no, no. Uh, you, why, why not? Uh, um, you know, it is not, it is not exactly uh, accurate what uh, if, if what uh, O'Brien has said uh, as presented, uh, presented by you. Uh, there is statistics which somehow uh, UN and Geneva is not circulating. Statistics about uh, quite a number of uh, towns and cities where humanitarian assistance has been moving uh, during this week, after the uh, document was, was endorsed. Uh, but UN somehow uh, circulates only information on denial, not information on uh, receiving and uh, allowing. Uh, can next time you talk to him, uh, or he talks to you, ask him for the full, full information. I believe this will be a better picture. By the way, uh, on still on Aleppo, 26th of August was uh, another meeting uh, between me and John Kerry in Geneva, uh, and Stefan de Mistura was there. And Stefan said, "It's a very lucky coincidence, and very symbolic. We are meeting in Geneva, and today the first humanitarian convoy will move." from Turkey to Eastern Aleppo. And uh, we were even preparing some statement to the press and some celebration. And then uh, the UN people received a message from the so-called local council in Eastern Aleppo, who said, if you use Castello Road, we would hit this one. We would fire it. And uh, I asked John, whether they would just swallow this threat or they have some influence uh, to use some their friends in the coalition and the region uh, to discipline these people, to let the humanitarian uh, goodies uh, into Eastern Aleppo. Uh, they could not uh, react. The minister said, why? Well, we, uh, let's wait for a couple of days, maybe on the 28th of August they would change their mind. Uh, then he hoped that they would do this on uh, early September and so on and so forth. Uh, I believe this is unacceptable. 
And uh, speaking of this, uh, I read, I think, in Wall Street Journal uh, on the next day after the Aleppo uh, incident that the day before the convoy, this unlucky convoy, <coughs> moved, the same local council from the same part of Aleppo said, uh, please don't send the convoy uh, because the government plans to, to hit it. And apparently, the UN people from O'Brien Department said uh, the risk of uh, shelling is not the reason not to send the convoy. Uh, I, I'm not, uh, you know, support of uh, conspiracy theories, uh, but if the same group one month ago says we will fire at this group, and then one month later they, they, they say the government will do this, even more reason to have very thorough and very uh, objective investigation. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, to take you to a, a somewhat different part of the Middle East, uh, uh, I had an exchange just a couple of hours ago with your French colleague, Monsieur Ayrol, about the uh, peace conference that they would like to hold, they say, in December. What I'd like to know is, sir, uh, is your government in any way involved? Do you support the holding of this peace conference? Uh, are you going to be participating in some way? And what realistically, in December, do you hope to uh, accomplish? Uh, we were not consulted on this initiative. We were just uh, told that there would be a meeting to discuss it in Paris on the 3rd of June. Uh, I could not make it. I had something uh, which prevented me from going. My deputy went. He participated there. Uh, he listened uh, to what was said uh, by the French hosts who explained uh, uh, their vision of this conference, uh, but this that preparatory meeting on the 3rd of June uh, was attended uh, by quite a number of countries whom the French invited, uh, but no, we were not consulted. Now we understand better uh, about the concept. They want uh, to address uh, social situation in Palestine, economic situation, uh, and so on and so forth, infrastructure, and of course also other measures of confidence building. We support anything which uh, makes uh, makes a, which uh, brings us closer to the resumption of Israeli-Palestinian talks. For this to happen, uh, any initiative <coughs> must be acceptable to both. Uh, and when it is acceptable to both parties, then uh, the parties must agree what will be the added value. Uh, some some ten years ago, by the way. We wanted to convene a conference. Uh, we did not announce it just out of the blue. We went to the Security Council. The Security Council endorsed the Moscow Conference Initiative. But we made it very clear that we would only move when we are convinced that the parties are ready to do something uh, positive together. Uh, if this is going to be the case uh, with the French Initiative, I would be only glad. But, uh, so far, it doesn't seem that the parties are equally eager to consider. Uh, but we are working with both Israel and Palestine. Uh, we have to resume negotiations anyway. Uh, and uh, there are some ideas that, uh, you know, there might be some meeting between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas and that we might be helpful if, if this is the case. If they both wanted, we certainly would, would not be found one. We have time for two questions, please, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Foreign Minister, and welcome back to a place that's very familiar to you. We're always glad to see you here. Um, I'd like to follow up on the what's next in Syria. From just listening to you, um, it appeared that you're saying that a three-day truce or a seven-day ceasefire aren't going to work unless there is real serious action on separating the opposition from the Nusra front. Um, does that mean 
that um, they're, we're going to have to wait, the world's going to have to wait for that to happen before there's any serious chance of a new uh, cessation of hostilities. Our, our UN Secretary of State, John Kerry, uh, planning to hold more talks either today or in the near future. You know, that means uh, that I need to repeat what I said, but I hope you can listen to your uh, recorded after the, the press conference. But, you know, it's uh, uh, one example, Yemen. Uh, there was a coup, a rebellion, the president ran away uh, a couple of years ago, was it? But unlike uh, Ukraine, where next morning after the president left Kyiv, people said, okay, fine, we recognize this government. In Yemen, for the second consecutive year, we say, no, 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 he must be brought back. He must be brought back. Uh, that's just in brackets about double standards for the situations which are very similar, especially taking into account that in case of Ukraine, uh, the coup took place next morning after the coup leaders signed a deal with the president of Ukraine, witnessed by Germany, France, and Poland. And all of them just, you know, washed their hands and said, well, he left Kyiv. By the way, he didn't run uh, abroad. He went to another city. But Yemen, for the second consecutive year, we are trying to find some uh, mysterious uh, solution which would resolve this uh, disaster Humanitarian disaster, by the way. Uh, talk to O'Brien, he knows, uh, he, he told me how bad things are in Yemen. And we all want uh, the participants uh, of this conflict, both Yemeni parties and the coalition, uh, with the help of the international community, to find a way out. The, the latest plan, designed after so many failed plans, was produced, I think, by US, UK, Saudi Arabia, and supported by. Uh, the UN envoy. The first step of this plan is creation of the government of national unity. Just like it was in the, in the case of Ukraine, which was uh, violated by, by the opposition who signed it. But in Yemen, the first item is government of national unity and then surrender of weapons, then uh, rem uh, pulling back from the territories. And I ask uh, the Americans and all those who raise questions in, in, in the same vein as you just did, why in Yemen uh, we all agreed that unless there is some political framework satisfying the, uh, all participants of the, of the crisis of the conflict, and why in Syria we say no political process until total quiet for one month or one week or three days. I hope this is, you can take this as, as an answer. Just, just the quick follow-up. Are you planning to meet Secretary Kerry again today? We or? met already. Um, Majid Gilli, Rodeo Media Network. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, uh, details of the recent ceasefire agreement remain sec secret. And uh, were the uh, Kurdish YPG forces included in that ceasefire? And do you think that future ceasefire agreement uh, should emphasize that attacking YPG forces by opposition or the government forces is a breach uh, of uh, that future ceasefire agreement? Yeah, but uh, I don't think uh, the uh, ceasefire, cessation of hostilities uh, details are secret. As I said, they were made public, uh, first by uh, Associated Press, I think, and then the State Department published them without really telling us, in spite of the fact that from the very beginning we insisted on making them public, but we thought it would be normal and uh, appropriate to do it together as two uh, sponsors, uh, co-chairs, and two uh, authors of this, of this document. But, doesn't matter. The main thing is that they are available. And uh, the entire mess of this, uh, the entire mess of these uh, decisions, ISSG, Security Council, Russian-American, Session of Hostility, it is 
uh, it proceeds from the very clear uh, principle that ISIL and NUSTA are considered as terrorist organizations uh, and listed as such by the Security Council. Anyone else is not considered as terrorist, is not considered as fair game, uh, provided they join the cessation of hostilities and provide, or, or, uh, provided they don't, don't attack anyone uh, of the participants of the cessation of hostilities. And uh, that's, that's my answer. Follow up on that, but uh, the YPG declared that they they are uh, they will be uh, they accept the ceasefire. But given the sensitivity, uh, as you are aware, aware of, between YPG and the uh, Turkish bank opposition uh, groups, do you think there should be an emphasis that they uh, attacking YPG forces is a violation of a ceasefire in future ceasefire? It's agreement? it's already very much uh, explicit from the documents which are made uh, officially public. I, as I told you, it's only Nusra and ISIL which are not covered by the cessation of hostilities. Those, except Nusra and ISIL, who want to be part of the cessation of hostilities are covered by this, uh, they have pr protection of the cessation of hostilities and of the Security Council. Uh, next Secretary General, do you have any thoughts on next Secretary General? A lot. <laughs> right, well.